listen y'all know i am so fed up if you've been here if this is your first time being here welcome to my channel girl listen i'm gonna get into it in a minute i've been trying to figure out how to use i literally have an issue like i feel like so freaking slow i'm just gonna dedicate a whole day to where i research and understand how the hell to work that thing because it is not giving. I'm going to put it here as a prop because I paid for it. Okay, period. Like, we're just going to pretend that it's on. I am so annoyed. I'm annoyed because what is the issue? I be on QuickTime Player. I be trying to use GarageBand. Y'all, I be struggling. If this is your first time here, I go by Zanji Does. This is a series I have on my channel. I usually do hair product. I usually do hair related videos um today i'm rocking this bun so you really can't see all my, my magic or whatever no um i'm rocking this bun today but yeah i usually do hair stuff but i like to on the side do a little advice video you can submit your story on the email below i have not been receiving let me i let me check today let's see if we got a submission girl my nails falling off like today is not my day but anyway while I check my email, cha, it's nothing there. It's nothing there, babes. Okay. So yeah, so normally this series is centered around subscribers, um, or people that like my stuff. I mean, you should subscribe if you like what you're seeing. You know, it's only nice, like it's common courtesy. Anyway, man, um <laughs> I yes, this is a series on my channel where you are attend I cannot speak today. Today's not my day. Um, this is a series where you submit anything you might need help with, a story, or what have you. Excuse me for the burp. Um, but yeah, you know, I sit here, look cute, open my iPad that is in the form of a cute little notebook because, because I'm trying to set the vibe for you. We got a candle on. I got this cute plant that I left one right I got this cute plant that I've been growing, okay, period. You see, you see me, let me put that in frame warm. Okay, today I'm going to usually have a nice little drink, but I was rushing today, I'm not going to be honest, and we're just going to do the water. This is my boyfriend's bottle. He put all these freaking stickers on it. Don't ask me what the stickers mean to me. Unfortunately, I have no connection to them. But he put it on, he hated it. He's like, just keep the bottles. I was like, okay. So yeah, guys, ultimately, you submit a story, something you need advice on, and I help you. But because I haven't been submissions yet, and the reason for that is not because people hate me, but it's just because I have a small platform. I'm aware of that, making y'all aware of that. And the bigger the platform is, the more submissions. So I'm basically using this as my portfolio, my little resume to show you. This is the advice I offer, and if I'm someone you want advice from, you come here, girl. But anyway, so if you're wondering, it's the first time here, and you're like, okay, where are you getting these from? Yeah, so I go on Reddit, and that's where I get all the stories or advice that people need, and I relay the advice over camera on YouTube. And that is just so that if you feel compelled or if you have a similar story, like, damn, like that person's going through the same thing as me, like, maybe I'll send me a story or whatever, you know. But I'm saying it's not private because. I have my Reddit public and I will reply to advice on there as well. So I'm not necessarily going to be here like, girl, cookie cutter number, cookie cutter 17 wants to have advice on. Like, I don't think that's appropriate. However, um, if you go to Reddit, it's public. You know what I mean? So it's really to your discretion. But yes, the rules of how to submit are on the screen. Um, my goal is for it to be anonymous. I'm trying to keep it anonymous. But yeah, you can follow me me presenting yeah you can um follow me <laughs> you can follow me on reddit and um see the advice i've given there that i don't film because i really like to give advice like that's why i made this series i've said this in videos before y'all are gonna get tired of me saying it but i got my diploma so no but um i went to school initially for psychology so i have a lot of course like basically at the brim point of completing the major and then i was like but Art is my stronger suit, so I don't really want to study psychology, but I ultimately wanted to be an art therapist, but this is like 
my informal way of doing it. I love doing it. I love YouTube. I love filming. I love sitting down. Let's get to the freaking point. I've been talking for like seven minutes. And all of my videos are like that that are this series. I have a little like briefing just to introduce new people. And I have set like, can I speak English today? I have timestamps below always with the titles of each thing. And I don't have a... Y'all see me, like, at this point, I'm about to start filming, like, hello? Sorry if I speak fast as well. I notice I do that a lot. Back then, it was, I just breathe too hard when I talk. And I think I'm doing that today, but if I am, mind your business. Um, yeah, but, um, there's a specific number of stories I read. I kind of just go with the flow. I'm gonna get my phone out of here. Um, I like to just go with the flow with it, and yeah, girl. I usually have like a nice smoothie, a nice drink, because I want to like entice you, I want to encourage you to have a nice beverage, you know. I suffer with kidney stones, not that y'all care, but I, if I can motivate you to drink something today, I will. What the hell is this? Okay, so yeah, what I do is sometimes throughout the week, I will collect um, posts, and then I'll sit down here, and we will read them i usually like to aim these videos to be one hour so let's get started let's get started how does this look on camera do it even look right i'm gonna put it right here is that even right like uh child this is what unprepared look like and i don't like that my virgo ass. <laughs> i know it won't turn on guys i just wanted to see something okay so we have a bunch saved yeah i don't even know where to go like i don't even have themes when i do this i'm kind of just like you know and all of my advice is based on my own experience or the experience of my friends around me who have also asked me for advice on things and i just remember scenarios like that um am i ashy child not the ashy oh my god what is my problem Oh my god, comment down below if y'all having a good or bad day, because I would love to know. Probably already be better than me. You see me all ashy, like, not prepared for filming. But I got glitter on my chest, though, right? But I can't add um, lotion my elbows. Like, embarrassing. Let's just keep it simple. What the hell is this? I mean, I'm gonna just read it because I already opened it. It's giving very high school, middle school teen. So, the title of this is just says Crush. Two question marks. The story goes, <clears throat> guys, I have a story. So basically, there's this girl, like, in my class at school. We've all been there. Um, <laughs> I mean, I like guys, but you know what I mean. Um, I've been talking to her a lot recently via FaceTime. You in there, so he's in there. Good, good. Um, however, the last time I FaceTimed her, she went away to the toilet and didn't come back. But someone else did. Oh, and I... <laughs> I hope it was a sibling, because what's this? Um... I saw the door open and as a joke I started licking my nipple because we have an inside joke about it. Yeah, these are definitely like middle school or high schoolers. Um, this wasn't her though, it was her dad. He ended the call and texted my mom saying she's gonna have a talk to my dad when he gets home from work. I really like this girl, but I think I ruined my chances. Oh my fucking god, are you <laughs> Should we skip? No, I'm just kidding. That was my rude. Okay, number one, don't worry so much. This is such a little ass dilemma. And that's the thing. When we're kids, we think things are so much bigger than what they really are. Like, it really do not be that deep. Um, you got caught being weird. That's fine. And I know how things are. So you're just weird with your friends sometimes. I get it. We were like, I used to do weird stuff all the time. And I still do. But, um... Clearly, the, your parents know each other, so you must be family friends. I think it's fine. The dad is being, oh, fuck, like, really annoying and being dramatic. And I would just talk to my parents, like, hey, I really like her, so I just act funny when I'm around her. Like, there's nothing weird going on. Um, yeah, just talk to your parents, honestly. That's what... It, that, oh, I wouldn't be able to do that because my parents are really strict. They're like, why are you even doing that anyway to begin with? So, I mean, I hope your parents aren't, aren't strict either. But um, it's really not that, that difficult, babes. Like, don't overthink it. Or if you're a girl, I mean, if you're a girl, that's different. Because a guy nipple versus a woman's, like, then I'd be like, okay, like, if your parents don't know you're out or not, like, that's when it gets tricky, but she, it looked like this was a guy that wrote that. So, I'm going to just say that whole conversation for another time, if it was girl on girl, or, but, um, 
it's okay. Don't worry. Don't freak out so much about it. If you are a younger viewer watching this and you're in something somewhere like that where you got caught, like, doing something weird and now your parents are involved, be honest. Just always be honest and be like, that's just how I am. Like, if my parents were open, I'd be like, bro, that's just how I am. Like, you know what I mean? I get you. Don't worry. This one's so long. I have to do, like, an episode by itself for that. Hold up, this might be T. Get out of here. Like, my iPad talking about you want to reply right now? Okay. This person brought their toy to work. Don't know why the hell that shit was even in your bag to begin with, but okay. Um, obviously, for YouTube reasons, I cannot say what or use different words for what I'm saying. But you get the point. Um, if you're younger, don't read this part. No, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, parents' discretion. I always say, I'll put it on the screen. I'm always like, please know, we talk about triggering things here. We talk about mature content. Um, very much so something you would learn, things you would learn while you're starting to hit puberty and you're in a teenager and people are telling you things and yada, yada, yada. So, just be aware. Um, like, this isn't for, like, seven-year-olds. You know what I'm saying? Um... The hair videos, go ahead. <laughs> um, so this person brought their toy to work. This is what they said. <sighs> so naturally, quarantine quarantining has got us all a bit down in the dumps. For me personally, the boredom mixed with the loneliness has led to some misadventures by myself in my house. But this time, this is the time it went out of the house. Because why are you being sloppy about it? Like, just <laughs> kidding. Um, we know the cycle. Do we know? Do we know the cycle? What are you talking? What are, what are you talking about? You know how Juicy go. What do you mean by that? <laughs> um, boredom and isolation leads to loneliness. Uh huh. Loneliness leads to horniness. And mm, and horniness leads to catastrophes. It doesn't have to be that serious. Um, last month I was considering buying myself a toy. As I've never, as I've never done before, and I haven't used one anyway. I looked at different online stores. I would say before we even go further, please do your research. Like I've never owned one, um, but I've learned a lot. Like just friends and people on social media say, like research the proper um, rubber or the proper material so you don't get infections. Make sure to disinfect your stuff as well when you when you use it. Um, I'm just checking my nail. Sorry. Um, make sure to disinfect your items, make sure to confiscate, not confiscate, sorry, um, properly put away your stuff, and especially if there's kids in the house, you don't want to, you just don't want any accidents, and most definitely don't take it outside of your house, like, what do you, I mean, if you're going for a link up, maybe you would take it out of your house, but, like, you gotta be more on top of that, let me keep reading, um, but yeah, do your research is all I have to say, and if you like Adam and Eve, there's a bunch of, like, not if you like Adam and Eve, but if you want a store, that's the one I see the most. And a bunch of YouTubers do codes and stuff. Adam and Eve, they'll try to sponsor me. <laughs> and a lot of YouTubers use that and have their little code. So research that and try to get your discount too, boo, if that's something you want to do. But um, let me see, where did I? I looked on different stores and the selection was daunting. And I was also pleased to know I would never be short of options. Um, That being said, my stupid self decided it would be fun to play the age old game of so they're basically like where can I get the freakiest the most in my house basically it's the way I'm gonna like not get monetized for this like my little hopeful ass trying to get monetized YouTube period they're gonna look at this and be like girl bye oh my god you're a freak like ugh I'm a little uncomfortable. Um, okay, so they were trying to play that game, right? Keep it spicy, they wrote. And that they would disinfect things. <laughs> I know I'm saying too much, but this is a safe space for me. We can tell, babes. We can. Um, one of the many things I put... Okay, so this person is going into detail of the stuff that they've used around the house in lieu of a toy. Which, research, it's really not safe to do that. Just imagine, like, think of, if you are in this dilemma, really think about doing that, because 
you've seen them horror stories at the hospital and the emergency room think about before you do something crazy before you think about putting some crazy stuff you know where do you really want to have that conversation do you really want to have that conversation you really think about that before you do anything like is the desperation that desperate that's all i gotta say fast forward to yesterday i had to get ready for work really fast and something went wrong in the dryer and i got a lot of lint on my uniform so this girl or guy used the roller used the the toy as a lint roller for their uniform how does that work now this is just entering a world i'm not aware of because what the what the fuck are you doing like azalea bank says like what is this <laughs> does it feel like jelly enough where you can like lint roll off Someone in the comments let me know below and keep it PG because what the f excuse me? <laughs> nah, is this trolling? Like, let me know in the comments below, please. Because I, I did not know it, it was giving multi use like that. <laughs> like, this video is so funny, and I'm only on story two. This is embarrassing. Okay, um, this is not one for the little kids. Please, please don't comment about how your kids are watching this and you're upset. Like, I'm trying my best here. I really am. I did not know it was going to get like this. What the hell? I don't know you could do that. All right. So this person, because they're running late, they put the stupid thing in their purse, which come on now. Um, she had, he or she had 10 minutes to be there, lived 13 minutes away. I put in my purse and I ran out the door. And then in the break room, they kept doing it. And then they put in their coat pocket. But they said that it has deep pockets so that they're safe. No. It was a busy day and by the time I got home, I crashed hard. I slept for 12 hours and the idea of, you know what, didn't even happen. The next morning, I went to get it and it was not there. I started panicking and I ran out of my car. So this is a guy and the toy that they have is a pocket, you know what, that's what I'm going to tell you. So what the f are you talking about? Lint roller. Do they sell one where it's like both? Or are you saying you're literally going like this with the... <laughs> you're gross. You're gross for that. Because what? Buy a freaking late roller. Are you serious? I'm ending the episode right here. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. No, I'm just kidding. What the... Like, I'm really done. Like, oh my gosh. Um. By the time I was sure I knew what happened... It wasn't confirmed until today. I went to work, clocked in, went to the break room, and lo and behold, it was sitting on the break table like a prize position. My coworker walked in, asked if it was mine, and I said yes. How did you get on the table? What? I mean, at least you're honest about your your situation, because I would have been like, girl, oh my god, where did that come from? Like, is that is that Jax? Like, who's this? <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, that's crazy. Wow, that's crazy. Like <laughs> she so the coworker said someone found it on the floor under the coat rack and she just put it there in case whoever belonged to would just take it home. Um But that the coworker found other people using it multiple times. Is this cap like what were you going out of work for two days? Like how do you find more than one person? Also what is where do you work and why are your coworkers just seeing a thing pocket thing and going mm, let me use that real quick like are men that desperate? I've heard men be desperate but like are they really as desperate as I'm finding out right now? Comment down below what you think about this story so far because I'm I'm not happy. I am. It's giving trolling, but it's giving what the fuck. Like, I really don't. <sighs> Let me catch my breath. Um, <clears throat> I resisted the urge to look at my toy and ask her how can she do this to me. Shut the fuck up. And then the boss comes in and says, oh, yeah, I needed the unlit roller and rubs it on his jacket like i'm confused it must be both maybe it's like a discreet one i'm gonna just go with that he's just person being weird talking about my beloved toy okay so it's a makeshift thing it's a makeshift toy but it's also a lit roller And so, because it's a little roll, they're like, oh, yeah, I need to use it. So, he's feeling away because everybody 
wanted to use the lint roller and he's feeling he or she's feeling a way like oh my god you know like you're dirty and you're touching my, my privacy there's people in the comments wondering if i'm a man or a woman i'm non-binary okay so this is somebody who yes okay so let's see sometimes i like to see what people say in the comments um someone said i was actually thinking today how much gross poop we touch during the day that we don't realize i was a little grossed out but whatever what i don't know can't hurt me i really wish i could unread the i mean i feel you i feel you because what was that what was that um yeah next time all i gotta say is can y'all need to y'all are grown as y'all keep growing up and y'all keep maturing and what have you please be mindful where you're putting your stuff be mindful of keeping your private things private, locked up, whatever. Like, that would be my house lint roller, period. Like, that's not going in my none of my bags. Like, period. Like, why is that going in your bag? And, yeah, you're running late and whatever. That's the time I'm going to work and be like, who got a lint roller? Because now, look. Now it's awkward. And now what if someone's like, what if you get me like, why are you touching my lint roller? Like, what's up? What's up? Like, you got beef and stuff. And someone's like... Why are you surprised? Why are you surprised? They click that one button and now it's makeshift. And now what? That sort of just gave me a headache. I need to eat some lunch. What the hell? Let's hear this tea. So it says, Karen secretly filmed me jogging and showed the video to my boss. Okay, ladies, let's see what's tea in the Karen community. Let's hear what's going on with the girls. The girls are fighting. Um, so the story says i recently had an emergency appendectomy so i'm assuming that's an appendix surgery so sorry if i scratch my nose throughout the video i have allergies and my nose just um i had an emergency thing so i'm assuming it's an appendix surgery yeah um and the recovery has been slow i had to take time off with my own athletics but worse from coaching the kids sports program i'm involved with okay I already know where this story is going. Y'all feel the vibe? Yeah. She's not like, I can't coach anymore because of my surgery. She's trying to run off, heal herself. Someone's a nasty ass mom was like, let me send this video to Coach Blige. Let me send this video to Coach Blige and show that Coach, Coach Cecilia has been lying about missing work. Oh, say that. I cannot. Anyways, let's read. The experience made me step back and realize I really built my whole identity around being active and healthy. So the hit my physical abilities took as a result of being sick, plus the healing process has made me feel lost. Um, I've been working to regain the joy I used to experience from exercise without going, oh, you used to be so much faster with that, or your technique used to be so much stronger, or you don't fit in anymore, or whatever else, and just enjoy myself regardless of sorry the camera cut off i had to press record again but um ironically the anxiety about not being able to do what i used to has a mary has me regaining those abilities difficult it made me self-conscious about exercising in public spaces but i was starting to finally get over it as my friends convinced me the source of the concerns were all in my head those are real friends sis. they're right like you were built for this <laughs> like your anxiety is just getting to you, you know, and you got, like, you were built for this. Like, it's no a new lifestyle you're trying to attain. You've been doing this. So, it's really all mental. It really is. And, of course, you're sick. Like, not you're sick, but you just came from a surgery. So, you got to, like, be gentle on yourself. If anyone's going out there, out there going through surgery right now, like, just be gentle on yourself and don't rush to where you was. Like, it's all a process. Um, there's no way to get back to it other than training. So despite the anxiety, I started running again as soon as the doctors approved it. That's good. So you're not rushing your process. I went to the local track and just did a few slow laps each morning, building up my speed. This girl knows what she's doing. She's on the right track. Um, they were authorized to add more sprints, 
body weight strength training to the mix occasionally there were other people at the track but i didn't really notice because i wrote my headphones on and i tried to zone out in these lighter sessions but little did i know my friends were wrong it was not all in my head i was being watched and more than that i was being judged my absolute catastrophe level worst nightmare at the stage of building back my strength and speed but like just taking a pause before i keep reading I always thought, it seems like this is just not a thing, but I always thought people that work out consistently is not worried about who's watching them. And I don't know if you're feeling this way because of the whole surgery, or if you've just always been like that. And I'm really sorry if someone's watching you, like what the hell is their issue, like it's weird, it's giving weird, it's giving annoying. I know that feeling, like when I know I'm being watched, or if I know people can hear me working out, whatever, I just don't want to do it completely, like I'm, I'm, nothing is going to get me to do it at all. You could tell me, girl, this is that one workout, that one workout where you lose 40 pounds in this one workout. I'll be like, okay, I'm not doing it. <laughs> like, I get it. It's very, it's, yeah, I get it. I don't have the word for it, but I get it. On Friday, I was setting up for practice at the kids' program, and the head coach asked me into his office because a parent had a complaint. Here we go. A parent I didn't know too well, Karen, was there, and he said she had specific complaints about me. The meeting almost didn't happen because of Karen's initial refusal to put a mask on. But eventually her desire to tell on me for whatever she thought she had overrode her freedoms to infect everyone. It's giving corny. I was a bit nervous as, as anyone is being called to meet with their boss over a complaint. But I figured it was a classic case of my kids should start more or I know my kid tried out as a midfielder but I want him or her to switch to this other position the kind of the rules don't apply to me thing but instead I sit down in the office and Karen is playing my boss a video of me running on the track that she filmed from mad far away I was horrified because no one has ever told me has ever used what I, I was horrified because no one's really used to seeing themselves on video and because I was embarrassed about how slow I was <laughs> I just feel bad for this person because, like, why was I your thought? I would have been like, why the hell are you filming me? Like, what are you, what is there to film? But I get it. I have body dysmorphia, and I think my first thought would be like, oh, my God, I look crazy in that video. But what the hell? She said I met her, like, maybe four times. Why would she ever film me? Right. She explained that her 8-year-old son, one of the players that I coach, was lapping me in the video and insisting the coaches need to hold themselves to a higher athletic standard that than the young players if they want to prepare them for college teams. Calm the fuck down. I don't see you on the track running, so I know. Oh my god. Now I understand why your tone is so like insecure in this message that you're this story that you're saying. Because I'm like, if I know I'm athletic, I know I'm doing it. I'm a coach and I'm a whole coach. No one's going to tell me nothing. But this girl stripped you. She stripped you of your abilities. And you got that shit down pat. Like, this is pissing me off. My boss patiently but firmly explained to her that my physical abilities are not the parents' concerns, period. And all personnel are closely managed by head coaches. Because what the fuck? Like, what is your, your problem? Why does this matter to you? Why are you comparing me to your eight-year-old son? What the hell? Like... On everything, I'm like, get out there and go on the track then. I want to see you run a lot. It's crickets, exactly. What the Karen went on to say I'm out of shape. And that's probably why I've been taking so much time off. And that this isn't good for the kids to see. She asked if there was someone else she could speak to, but he explained that he's the owner of the program, so no, there isn't. I knew my boss was intentionally avoiding saying what happened to me or even saying that there's a health issue to protect my privacy, which I respect, but I would have, if I was in there, I'd be like, bitch, I just had a surgery. What the hell? That shit pissed me off. Um, I figured maybe being transparent with her would show her how ridiculous she's being. Yeah, but she don't even deserve that, really, like. What if you tell her she's like, okay, you're so slow? That would have pissed me off. When I explained, she just turned to the boss and said, 
well, maybe you should furlough her until she's healed and bring on a healthy coach in the meantime. Because my son needs someone out there who can keep up with him. So how's about this, ma'am? How's about you take him out and you teach him? Can you keep up? You clearly can keep up with your son since you got so much to say. Okay, period. Shut the fuck up. Like, it is not giving. She kept fussing at the coach and finally told her that she had to get out, like, and that her son needs to go back with all the other kids, like. And then she started to leave, fussing about how she's not satisfied, and that she won't recommend us to other parents. Coach tells her, if you come back here and we find you, like, surveilling, filming people's stuff again and what have you and being inappropriate, we're going to have you and your son kick off the team. And this person said that she was satisfied with what the coach said. And she says her son is a good person. The girl write the story, person writing the story says the kid is a good person. And that, I wish she's, she's a role. I'm trying to see if she had a follow up, but she didn't. Yeah, she's just, I'm trying to see what people are saying to her. But she was just saying, like, writing it out is really helpful for her. Um... Someone said, why does she just prefer a man to coach her son? And the poster said, I didn't think about that. Honestly, I don't think that was a problem. Yeah. No. I would have reacted the same way. Comment down below how you would have reacted to that because what is your problem? Absolutely not. This isn't even a world I'm a part of. Like, I'm not a parent. I don't go to coaching, like, games and all that and whatever. But I can imagine how it feels. And this is just so inappropriate. Like, the boundaries cross. Let's do some more Karen talk, if you will. This isn't really Karen, but... Well, I don't know the race, but... What is this? They're using, like, lingo. I have no clue what that even is, so I'm not. This one's kind of sad. Okay. So the title of this is my mom passed away last month and my demon nieces broke the last sculpture she made. You already know what the story says. The title says it all. My mom passed away a few weeks ago. She was only 50 and lost a short battle with stage 5 cancer late detection. I'm sorry for your loss. She was a complex woman, and even though I didn't have the closest relationship with her, we naturally, recon we naturally reconciled after her diagnosis. She was forced to have a family by her parents. She didn't finish school and felt like her life was taken away. After she had kids, she mostly ignored the family and did whatever she wanted, namely travel the world and go back to school. Looking at the photo she took, she lived quite a life. I couldn't even be mad at her anymore. Yeah, this is really hard because clearly your mom didn't even want you. Um, on the flip, my educated sister-in-law is a breeder. She quit her job to have as many kids as possible. Why you gotta call her a breeder? Like, ew. It's getting, I don't like how you wrote that. She quit her job to have as many kids as possible. She's currently pregnant with her fifth kid. My partner loves his nieces and nephews since we haven't seen them since May. We invited them over for the holiday weekend. My sister-in-law is very paranoid when she's pregnant, so we are sure they were quarantining. <laughs> she brings the kids to play in our living room. I step away for less than a minute, and I hear something shatter. Badass kids, I'm telling you, them badass kids, I hate them. I cannot stand them. Get your kids. I asked my partner to go check, and all I heard was, oh, beep. I run over and saw it was a statue that my mom had hand <sighs> carved for me on her deathbed. Throw them away. Get the hell out of my house. Get out of my house. <laughs> death makes me so, I, I have such an issue with death. I get so emotional about death. And little things like this, little like, oh, uh, that shit. Or when people touch my stuff, oh my god. I would have cried and slapped somebody. I don't care. <laughs> like, oh my god. 
Okay. I'll catch my breath. She was a talented mixed media artist and she said it would bring some luck. Not the luck. Oh my god. And you probably felt that. I know how that feels. Like you have something that makes you feel lucky. Why? I'm crying right in this. I try not to make a scene in front of the demons. So I picked up the pieces and went into the bedroom. But I was hysterical and cried for hours. The girl somehow got to it when it was in the top of the five foot bookcase. They're being bad as fuck. Why are you doing that? You hear my tone change? Why are you doing that? It's in the fifth top. Like, it's on there for a reason. Why are you shaking shit? Why are you touching? Like, and was there no adults around? Like, why was no one stopping them? That's that shit. Like, that pissed me off. That pissed me off. Like, I really can't. I spent some hours wondering how, because they're bad and they know, well, some kids be known, when something is out of their reach and they want to get it, they know it's because they're not supposed to have it. And that's that thing that pisses me off. If you know you're not supposed to have it, do not be touching it. Oh my God. Let me get out of character, child, because what the hell is like, why? Oh my God. Uh, it was not fixable. Oh, and the pieces were swept into a Tupperware container like trash. My sister-in-law didn't understand why it was so important because it doesn't fucking matter to you. Get it out of my face. Get out of my face. <laughs> um, even though my partner explained to her that it was from my dead mother, so she still didn't understand after, like, it's giving hater. Like, get the fuck out of my house. I can't even. Like, I'm mad. I'm pitching my skin for you because I'm annoyed for you. Like, um... She apologized to my face and left shortly after, but later told my partner's brother, her husband, I don't know why you were like that. She told her man that I put too much emphasis on material things ruined and it ruined the day and that she thought it was a toy for her kids. She had given it to them. If she said this to my face, I would have strangled her. My mother, I'm about to spill some tea right now because what the fuck is going on? My mother's death is still a fresh wound. I wasn't able to be with her at the end in a big part due to COVID restrictions. So not only did I find comfort in the small sculpture, I felt connected to my mom through this material thing. My mom said it was her way of watching over me when she passed. So I felt that connection was instantly broken. My partner has been supportive and confronted my sister-in-law several times when she was lying over the family thread. Oh, so she's lying now, like, okay. And the family has been sending their sympathies and they know she's wrong, but she keeps bringing it up and being an all-around attention whore she seriously texted i'm pregnant and i'm not this dramatic to which i told her maybe you should stop having kids and teach the ones you have to not destroy everything in their sight leave me alone please send tips on how to not strangle her at the next family event this is a sister-in-law that is married to my partner's brother give me a second I had to go put on some lip gloss but hear me very loud and clear when i say this and this is coming from someone who wants to have kids in the future is not financially ready to do so yet and probably not mentally ready to do so yet but has been around that not the nail coming on oh, sorry these nails have been in for like two weeks and they're on the brink ladies and gentlemen they're on the brink a lot of people around my age are having kids right you guys know what the bad kids is like don't all of a sudden have kids and forget that that bad kids be bad it be causing causing issues for people because of your negligence like as someone who wants kids i don't say i hate kids i'm not saying i hate kids and i'm not saying all kids are kids aren't kids and that kids don't do what kids do but as an adult you are responsible Especially if you're in the room with them, you are responsible for what they do and the actions that they take. Okay? Hear me loud and clear. Like, I cannot stand hearing about a kid doing something bad, especially when an adult, an adult was in the room present. Okay? So, when I tell you this, always speak up. Always speak up. Like, now this poor woman has nothing to remember her mother by. Like, that was her one thing. If you've never had someone pass and have that one thing of theirs and it gets taken away, I have a bunch of little stuff, knickknacks for people that have passed away that I keep and I hide it 
because I know for one people are clumsy anyway not just kids people okay people also have malintentions so do kids and another thing is we can't always be like kids are kids like like no there's a time and a place for that teach your kids how to be better kids at the house like do not be playing around and taking public situations as moments to educate your kids if you're going to put other people at risk of losing something or what have you you know like let's say a little kid sees someone disabled and they're like mommy they're mad aloud they're like mommy why is she in a wheelchair why can't she just walk like us yeah, yeah you know kids be saying stuff like that you take it as a moment there to be like hey we're not gonna do that you know what i'm saying like i'm looking on the floor because a little kid like hey we're not gonna do that okay i will explain in the house what that means and if that woman heard you i need you to, i need you to understand that you hurt this woman's feelings and i'm gonna explain to you in the house what you did and why that's wrong but i need you to apologize you know and say hey you know whatever i need to go up there and say you're sorry like you're sorry you said that that mean thing and that you didn't know people are are in wheelchairs when you're a kid you're allowed to say certain things if i'm an adult I'm, i didn't know people in wheelchairs exist as an adult you know people in wheelchairs exist but your kid doesn't you just gotta be like hey honey like there are some people who cannot walk and they have to be in a wheelchair you know putting it very simple and i can't think of the exact example in my head right now because i don't have a kid but the reason i say apologize now explain later because that's that moment where you can get that person right there and you're teaching your kid about the repercussions of saying mean things to people and doing things that hurts other people whether they know it or not you need to make like as a parent or if you're a parent to be as me like like let's say you're in my position where you don't even have kids it is your job if you want kids to prepare yourself and work on that vocabulary like you're not just gonna have a kid that's gonna come to you you need to research you need to practice the reason i can like kind of have a better strengthening like str strong suit around children is because i helped raise my siblings when i was 10. like i was an only kid for 10 years and then I got a sister from years past I got a brother and I had to help and I'm not talking about like cute little helping one day of the week I'm talking about yeah if you know you know the borderline like this is too much help borderline like these are my kids okay so please that's all I have to say that's all I gotta say I feel like I just came out of character and I just feel bad but um yeah mother's death and all that and this this person oh and i have an issue with with people when they're pregnant talking about they use their pregnancy as an excuse and i've never been pregnant okay i understand that but what you're not gonna do is disrespect me you know how to act before you were pregnant and you know how to act during and you know how to act after you are responsible let's say the hormones do get to you you lash out okay what are you responsible for? Everyone's telling, everyone around you is telling you you're messed up for that. Doesn't matter that you're pregnant or not. What is your responsibility? You finish with your pregnancy, fix out the hormones however you have to. If you're not able to, okay, fine. But you can morally know to be correct and go up to this person and say, you know what? You know what happened like 10 months ago, bro? I'm so sorry. Like, my kids were really being bad as fuck. Like, you do not deserve that. Like, I really am sorry that that happened. And if there's any way I can make it up to you, please let me know. And I know I can't bring back this sculpture. Maybe we can try to find something similar. Pray over it. Try to feel like your mom's spirit is back. And, like, give a fuck. That's, um, like, when you hurt people and you're actually sorry, pretend. Like, not pretend. Actually give a fuck. Care. Okay? And this, this woman has every right to be mad. She has every right to be mad and you're not going to sit here and take that um that experience from her okay but yeah that's my advice for this poor person like this is just really pissing me off because in the comments saying don't go if she ever is it there or something like no you keep going to these places you keep showing up your as yourself and you do what you gotta do 
cold shoulder. Yeah, give him a cold shoulder. Her and the kids, no stuff. Give her that cold shoulder, like... Everyone in the comments like, she clearly doesn't have control of her kids. And you clearly called her a breeder because you don't like that she has so many kids and that she clearly can't control at least one. So, I understand. And if it means your belongings, she cannot come to my house again. She cannot come to your house again because she's her kids have no control. No one's controlling them. So, no. Another thing is about to happen. If it's the sculpture, it's going to be the TV. It's going to be the microwave. It's going to be the fridge door broke. It's going to be the carpet ripped off the floor. Like, if people, like, if you know your kids are bad, do not be fucking bringing your badass kids around. Like, no, if you know you cannot control your kid, like, your kid is very, and yes, I know bad kids, like, there's kids that aren't necessarily bad. They're just dealing with stuff mentally. And then there's mental disorders, there's etc. I understand that. No one's discrediting that. But if you are aware of those issues or those situations, please be vigilant about the surroundings you bring your kids around. There definitely is such a thing as your kid being too overstimulated in a place. Okay? And maybe that makes them lash out and act crazy and go slapping. Like, okay. Okay, you know, like, you know when there's a newborn, right? And you're like, okay, is it time to, like, bring him to the restroom? Like, or is he going to start crying? You test it out. He cries, oh, we're going to wait on that and keep practicing at home. You're not going to keep bringing your kid to the restaurant crying, annoying everyone because you don't give a fuck? No. No, no, no. That's my advice for her. Comment down below what you would do, what you would say, what you think about what I said about the kids. Sometimes my verbiage is very bad, but the, sometimes my verbiage is really bad, but my point is there, if you know what I mean. If you have something similar that happened to you like this, email below, okay? Ugh, that just pissed me off, right? This is going to be the last one, because I know that last one was really long, um, and it's kind of tea. But it says, my mother-in-law is, and also, my mother-in-law is forcing my husband to live with her instead of me and our baby. Okay, why? Okay, why? Okay, anyway. This person writes, I moved back to my home country after my son was born. My husband came home for the birth and we decided that it's better for us to stay here as a family. My bo my son was born with medical issues that are best addressed here. He didn't write the medical issues, so I don't know what they are. But the problem is that his mom is widowed and she's not accepting it. She lives in my husband's home country. She's not alone though. His divorced sister... Why do you want to say that? His divorced sister lives with her. However, mother-in-law says she needs to have her son with her just for his company. She takes care of herself, but his sister doesn't want that responsibility anymore. Okay, does, your, does the sister have a family? Come on, let's, let's take it back a few steps. Um, mother-in-law says, yeah, okay, my mom, his mom threatened that she would disown him as her own son and never speak to him again. And this is where I stopped the story because that's not how we're going to achieve things here. That's not how we're going to get our way. By threatening people, that's not how we're going to do it. That pisses me off. Ugh. Um. I'm reasoning with her and telling her that he's now a dad, yeah. And his responsibilities change and that he wants to be there for his son and raise him. She's having none of it and says, it's okay. God, like, they, this person can, like, separate paragraphs. I'm just like all squiggling together um it's okay she said it's okay if you don't see your son for a year and a half my husband doesn't want to spend time away from his son just to go keep his mom company um since she doesn't want to listen to this this reason how can my husband stay with me and my son without ruining his relationship with his mother he respects her and doesn't want to cut ties with her he's in a difficult position i would rather i would be so upset if my mom decided not to speak to me anymore, but thankfully my mom is a very understanding woman. He's raising a family that never left the village they're from. He has been the first to do so. 
You know what the first person said in the comments? They said, your husband should tell his mom it's okay if she doesn't see her son for a year and a half. And no lies were said there. No lies were said there. My advice, very point blank period, is unfortunately your husband is going to have to choose. This is not something everyone's going to be happy about. No, this situation, I don't think anyone's going to be happy at the end of the day. And I think it's very disrespectful and unfair when um, parents put ultimatums on their family members, especially like this. And not only that, but your son is sick. Your son is not a regular, regular baby, you know, that is fine and can, yeah, whatever go a year and a half without seeing his dad because what happened no this for like this medical emergencies and your mom had her whole life ahead of her and i'm sorry to your sister but if your sister does not have a family someone's got to be responsible and i'm not saying i'm not saying that kids have to be responsible for the parents because ultimately no not really but if it's really that serious who's gonna do it me or your sister Husband can't do it. If sis can't do it, if sis got her own family, okay, she can't either. So now what? Mom, you're going to need to get some friends. You're going to need, like, y'all don't got cousins, y'all don't got uncles, y'all don't got nothing else. Or that, or if you're really willing to bite that bullet, have mom come move in with you. Of course, the family was not happy that your her, her um the son was the first one to leave the village, clearly, right? They probably think negative of you to begin with. Because they're probably like, oh my god, like she took our son from us. He lives in whatever now. Why can't we be a happy family where we all live? I don't doubt that for a minute. So, I know you want to be nice and whatever and say, oh, what? I don't want you to break that relationship with your mom. But people show their, <laughs> their true colors at the end of the day as time goes on. And this woman, your kid's grandmother... Yurka's grandmother is saying, I don't give a fuck about that baby. She's like, I don't care about that baby. Like, that baby's got nothing to do with me. He'll, I could, I don't care about him for like a year. I could take a whole year without caring about that kid. Like, I don't care. That should say something to you. For real. Like, as a mom, I'd be like, okay, so what's tea? Like, why are you... Why do you feel that way? Like, is there an issue? And I think you all should sit down and have a talk, a family talk. Because I'm not a big fan of, oh, he said, she said, whatever. No, we're all going to sit down at this table and here's the team. And maybe intervention for mom. How does the sister feel about this? Like, there wasn't much said about, like, is she cool with the husband? You know what I'm saying? So, unfortunately, when you build a family, some things take the back seat. And that is my advice for this person. And this is applicable for anyone hearing this too. If you're in a situation where you feel like you have to choose between the family or the in-laws or the parents. This could also apply for people who don't have a kid yet, but they live together with their partner. You know what I mean? Like the future is being built, but it's not there yet because there's no kids yet. But the tiny family is there. Two people being together, that's a little family. And I'm not going to have y'all tell me it's not. Think about it. And the manipulation part is fucked up. I don't like that. I'm not vibing with that. She's not a good person. You don't manipulate people to get your way. And I'm sure that's not something you want around your baby. And I'm sure if you love your husband, you wouldn't want to go through that. So your husband needs to open his eyes because that's the problem and I've noticed this as I grow up is that we like to forgive our family for a lot of the things, the mess of things that they do when something should not be forgiven. And I'm sorry about it. Like I know some people be in the comments like, oh, you know, blood is thicker than water, what have you. Look up the Bible verse for that. My therapist and I had a talk and she said the Bible verse actually, and I'll put it on the screen if I find it. And I was like, huh. So, God was never talking about, if we're going to take it to religion, God was never talking about blood is thicker than water. He really said this on the screen. So, sometimes we need to remove the labels off of people 
because sometimes the labels are power trips for people, unfortunately. For some family members, knowing you're a sister, knowing you're a brother, you're like, okay, well, I'm your brother, so I can get away with that. I'm your brother, so it's okay. That's just how I am. I'm a dickhead. Like, that's just, just me, you know, it's our thing. I'm rude to you, you take it. No, I'm sorry. We need, as a generation, we gotta stop that because that's why there's so much trauma in families and manipulation and what have you. This mom is like, oh, I'm a mom and I'm getting old, so one of my kids needs to step up. It's their job. No, they did their job. Now it's their job to be parents and build their families and build their futures. They can help you, but how it was when y'all was kids, like, that's just not realistic. Y'all, my phone died. Oh, my camera died, but to wrap up the story, um, again, you can make a story here uh, if you need advice. To wrap up what I was saying, because I was like, do I film the rest later? No, I need mean, I was on a roll, you know what I mean? So, point is, you know, I don't think it's right that you're being manipulated, and that's how it has to be. You know what I'm saying? So, my word of advice at the end of the day is, you have a family, and it's time to take care of that. Plain and simple, honestly, like, that's all I have to say. But if you have anything else to suggest to this person, please comment down below. Or if you have something similar, let them know in the comments. Let me know in the comments. Again, email to the email at the bottom right here if, if you need advice or have something similar that you went through. I am going to be ending the video here, and I just want to say thank you so much for watching this episode of Gangy Does Tea. And as always, you can submit at the email, comment down below how you feel, follow me on Reddit as well, put it on the screen. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, okay? So you can see more of this and more hair videos. Don't forget to like this video too so I can show up on the algorithm. That's an important thing. The more you like my videos, the more I show up, and the more people can see and submit stories and what have you okay so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one